Today we're going to compare the Boogaboo B6 and the Nuna Triv, two models that we've received several requests to look at in relation to each other lately, as their similarly small folded size, light weight, and reversible seats make both appealing options for parents who either drive a lot, yet have small trunk space, or who live in tighter urban conditions, potentially with the need to carry their strollers up the stairs regularly, or who may have less storage space at home. So let's get started then, looking at each in turn, and going over their differences in terms of child comfort, ease of use, longevity, and driving characteristics, before ending with a discussion of which lifestyle and environmental particulars each will best suit. And beginning with the B then, the model clocks in at 10.5 kilos and folds down to 90 by 47 by 36 centimeters. The B has a reasonably sized seat with a deep, newborn acceptable recline, an inside width of 28.5 centimeters, and both back and baseboards that are expandable up to a maximum length of 95 centimeters. The expandable baseboard is there in lieu of an adjustable leg rest, and, though there is a front frame mounted footrest, the B will really only provide leg support in the parent facing position for the first 12 to 18 months, after which the model will be significantly more comfortable for children when facing forwards. As far as your own comfort is concerned, the B is pretty middle of the road for smaller sized models in terms of its range of handle height, 91 to 108 centimeters, and the size and accessibility of its shopping basket, though beyond this, my general opinion is that the design's a bit too complex, involving a great many moving components for its functions, which make it a bit fiddly right out of the box, and also highly prone to alignment problems as it loosens up through use, especially if not lubricated with silicon spray, and which can specifically cause functional hiccups with folding, adjusting this position of the seat, or reversing the seat. That being said, for parents who are willing to learn its eccentricities, the B has actually shown itself to hold up quite well over time, at least as far as the chassis is concerned, where, despite that propensity for loosening, there's abundant cross support on the model, and many of the smaller, crucial areas that are subject to wear problems have been fine-tuned and reinforced over the B's long history of updates. The seat frame is unfortunately another matter though, being constructed almost entirely of large, flat, plastic elements layered atop each other whose moving components are both often the locus of alignment problems resulting from the loosening of the chassis around the seat frame, as well as being those areas of the B most subject to braking as a result of accidents. As far as driving is concerned, the B, especially the current iteration, does quite decently for a model of its size, being easy to maneuver and, though terrain capability is limited, still has sufficiently sized front wheels and suspension to handle the rougher areas of otherwise smoother urban environments, like broken sidewalks, gravel, park grass, and lighter cobblestones, though limiting use over ground that really makes the model jitter will help slow loosening and wear problems in the long run. Moving on, the Triv is both a little lighter than the B, weighing a smidge over 9 kilos, and also folds down to a smaller 32 by 52 by 65 centimeters. Its seat, conversely though, is wider, 33 centimeters, and also offers a similar newborn acceptable recline. For leg support, the Triv has an adjustable leg rest of decent length, which is a better setup than the B's expandable baseboard, and though the Triv doesn't really have a front frame mounted footrest, these other factors give it superior comfort for children from around a year old up to two and a half in both the forward and reversed positions. When it comes to parent comfort, the Triv is easier and more comfortable to use than the B in my opinion, with a seat that's higher off the ground, more intuitively responsive seat mechanisms, a much simpler and sturdier folding setup, a larger and more accessible shopping basket, and a slightly higher range of handle height at 98 to 110 centimeters. And the one real disadvantage of the Triv in terms of how it feels to use in my opinion is that the combination of a narrow rear frame and very malleable suspension create a feeling of instability with the model, as though there's a danger of tipping, in particular when carrying an older child. Note here that the B also has a narrower rear frame in comparison to its front frame, but doesn't feel unstable in the same way due to stiffer suspension and better cross support. The feel of the Triv is also both taller yet lankier than the B, which is nice in a way, but also unfortunately means that, despite not suffering from the B's complexity problems, the chassis is a bit more fragile overall, with less cross support to reinforce its longer profile, making it more likely to actually break in the long run, as opposed to just getting loose, in one or another of its longer, thinner bars. And this fragility, in combination with a somewhat unstable feeling rear frame, impacts driving as well where, despite being able to handle more or less the same terrain right out of the box as the B, the model definitely feels a bit less sturdy to use for longer, all-day outings under these conditions, and will also wear down significantly more from such use. So, which of these models will be right for you then? 
Personally, I would say that the chief factor separating these two comes down to how much you need to use your stroller on a daily basis. So while both the B and the Triv are tailored towards smoother urban conditions and parents with space concerns who need a smaller model for negotiating crowded environments or for fitting in a smaller size trunk, the B will be the better choice for people who will be out all day for longer trips, who will really use the model as their means of getting around the city, while the Triv, with its easier fold, though more fragile construction, will make a better stroller to keep in the trunk, and or for shorter shopping excursions, trips to the doctor, or to extra smooth day trip locations like zoos or amusement parks, where its better shopping basket will also be appreciated. All that being said, despite being far from the worst small-sized reversible seat strollers on the market, there are better options than both of these out there in my opinion. And in addition to linking the full reviews of both of these models in the description, I've also linked a video where we compare these two to a wider range of models with similar use value that I'd recommend watching before settling on either of them. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we also have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page, which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle-related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.